Hi, I'm Robert Joseph, and today I'm going to teach you how to make this, and this, and this. So if you didn't catch that, um, I'm going to go through each one of these again uh, right now. So this is view A of the Slim Brief. It's number 54 on my pattern of numbers. And this uh, brief is actually uh, very similar to a regular swim brief, except that um, on my other ones, I have a center front seam that goes all the way down the center front. This one just has a bottom dart, which just gives a little bit of shape to the front area. It has regular side seams here and then a scoop a shallow scoop here um, for the buttocks no center back seam in fact none of the views have a center back seam so this one is pretty uh, standard and that's why I chose to do the uh, swim brief out of swim fabric for the tutorial on this one this is view B and um, it you probably can't tell here but once you get into the tutorial it is a little bit different than the view A whereas um, the view A had side seams and no center front seam it's the same here for view B and C no center front seam um, with the exception of uh, the dart here for shape which is the bottom dart at the bottom of the pouch now view B and C do not have side seams rather I put these angled front seams here which gives you the option to customize with different types of fabrics so again no side seam and no center back seam but a slightly higher cut um, on the rear it's not as full back here on the pattern it looks fuller but um, it is uh, a little bit more shallow so that is your view B so this is view C um, and it looks very similar to the view B although you can probably see the uh, front side um, slash seams here better um, on this fabric again just to reiterate again no center front seam but I do have a lower uh, dart um, here at the lower pouch uh, the front angled seams there are no side seams but view C I get this all the way turned around here has a, a slash here in the center back which can make for some really fun um, work with different fabrications and what I chose to do here if you can see it here I'm turning this around so um, in the video as I have a little trouble with this but I did choose to do it with the mesh and this is a see-through uh, mesh so that could be kind of really fun on the side panels so uh, there's just a different um, center back it's not a center back seam I'm sorry correcting myself just a slash seam here which actually um, imitates the same slash lines here in the front now just a couple of things to let you know about the pattern overall is that the front is slightly lower cut a little bit lower in the front here on the waist it kind of scoops down a little bit and once you get the pattern you will see that it does that the uh, dart at the lower pouch kind of compensates for that so it gives you a little bit more room um, down here in this area as it scoops away in the lower um, tummy area the other thing is even though it doesn't look like it on my mannequin here here. I do have a slightly higher cut around the leg and so for this brief it is slightly cut a little bit higher so it goes over or your leg muscle here um, for a little bit more ease and wearing um, so just know that that those are just particulars in the overall pattern so I will get into cutting out the fabric right after the intro Wait, don't go. I almost forgot a new development here um, for my Sew It Like a Man sewing patterns um, is that with this pattern and a couple of my previous ones that I've released is that you will be getting written sewing instructions. So I have all the views illustrated with sewing instructions so that if you don't want to watch the entire video um, and you want to get started I do have the sewing instructions for you and you will get that with this download so um, however uh, I will tell you that you get a lot of more information from me in the videos about fabrics and elastics and things like that so if you're new to sewing I would suggest that you watch the video and I know it gets long and sometimes I ramble on um, but I want to make sure you have the most information um, available that I can give you to help you make a really great looking brief.
Um, so if you're new to the channel, if you haven't subscribed, the best way to learn about when I uh, offer a new pattern is to hit the notification button. Subscribe and hit the notification button because every time I upload a new video, unless it's strictly just a tutorial, sewing tutorial, um, that is usually when I release a new pattern. So again, this is the Slim Brief. 054 is the number. It's available now on my sewitlikeaman.com website. You get the sewing instructions. There are free there are three views, $10. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and now on to the tutorial. Okay, so before uh, I start cutting things out, I just again want to cover everything that's going to happen. So I'm going to do all three uh, views. There is view A, view B, and view C. Um, I'm gonna do all three of those in this video. And I'm gonna try to keep it, you know, as short as I can, but I didn't wanna do three separate videos. So just to explain, so the view A just has these two pattern pieces here. It's a front and a back. Um, but we, if we go to view B and C, um, B and C have the same front pattern piece. And it's actually very similar to uh, the front uh, the front of A, I'm not in frame, okay, in front of A. So when I sew the front A, um, uh, I'm also going to be sewing the front of B and C because it's basically just sewing the two pieces together um, on these two seams right here. So, so I'm going to kind of do it like that, but I'll show you each of the views as we go along. So I'm going to sew all three of the parts that are similar together. So just to explain a little bit further for view A, um, I'm going to make this one a swim. And so I've got some swim fabric here, a very bright neon pink. Um, and I'm also going to line it. Now on all these patterns, the front, it says it's optional to line. So um, on a swimsuit, and even on underwear, um, I like to line the front, the front part. So um, now these two, the B and the C, I'm going to be making with some uh, stretchy jersey knit. So this is going to be more like an underwear style uh, rather than a swimsuit. But of course you can actually make swim out of all of this and you can make underwear out of all of this. It's just the type of fabrics that you choose. So um, this is a nylon uh, spandex. So this one, I'm gonna have kind of some fun with it. So let me just uh, show you view C. Let me move this down here. So for view C, I have the front, and um, then I have like this side, um, and these patterns kind of get flipped around. Um, and the back here, this is kind of like the side of view C, and then this is the rear back, which gets sewn together. And for the side, I'm gonna use this mesh. This is kind of fun. So I'm, uh, I don't really use a lot of tricky fabrics in my videos because I want um, everybody to feel like they can actually use the same fabrics I'm using, but this is very lightweight. It's a mesh, you see through it, um, and it's very stretchy and kind of has a mind of its own. So um, this may be not be the best thing for a beginner, but if you're more advanced, you can also um, you find some mesh um, and then I'm gonna actually use the body parts um, this pink uh, jersey knit and this is a lightweight so um, I'm gonna line this in the front so that is the particulars of the views so now actually I will say one more thing I have my elastics ready I'm putting a one inch uh, elastic rolled waistband on all of these I keep going over here and I'm out of frame. So all of these take one inch uh, wide elastic. You can put the elastic on the outside if you choose, but just understand um, that you're gonna be taking a little bit away of, um, you won't be taking away from the height, it'll actually be higher because where this is gonna be folded under on all of them, okay? So one inch wide elastic. Um, and then for the swim, I'm going to use this swim elastic um, and I'll explain the choices during the elastic uh, demonstration tutorial. So this is cotton wrapped um, rubber, basically. So it's great for swimwear. And then for the underwear, I'm going to use this. This is a knitted elastic. It is 
uh, very uh, somewhat thin but very stretchy um, and it works really well with these lightweight um, jersey knits so and I, of course I have all of my uh, measurements the, the amount I need for my waist here and for the two leg opening elastics so I have that out always so um, I'm ready to get start cutting uh, and I will be right back here after I cut this all out Okay, so uh, just again, we have view A here, which is going to be a swim, uh, a swim brief, and then we have view B, which is going to be um, underwear, uh, and then view C is this more stylized cut, which is also going to be underwear, but I'm using a special fabric um, on that side area, and we've got all the elastics cut and everything. So now. Um, we can get ready to sew. Okay, so we are ready to get sewing. So there's one thing that I want to do before I get to sewing the fronts, and let me actually find all the fronts. So here are C fronts, here are B fronts, and I'm gonna set this other fabric over here for right now. And then I have the A front. So I'm going to set the B and the C a little more over to the side and I'm going to look at the A front. And so this is a swimsuit and I have swim lining. This is called Halenka. Um, and one of the things, wait till that tractor goes by. Um, one of the things about this lining is that it's kind of really stretchy. It stretches more than the other um, fabric. So we want to lay out the front. This is the front that I've laid out and we have the wrong side up um, and the face side is down. So when we do that, we want to put the wrong sides together. So I got to find the wrong side of the lining and I cut it so the, that I had the right sides or the face sides to Okay, so there's probably a weird edit there. So something happened outside and I had to go make sure everything was okay. It's fine. It was just a 
big tractor that went by. Anyway, um, what I was saying before is we need to work with the A front, and I cut these out uh, with the face sides together, and I say face side for the right side of the fabric, um, but I don't like to confuse the left and the right side of the body, so I say face side. So when we lay this out, and I open the uh, the fashion fabric or the suit fabric, I'm now looking at the face side of the fabric. So I need to flip this over. So now I have the wrong side of the fabric. Um, now I have uh, the lining here and I cut this again with the face side together. So if I open this up, I see the face side. This is the wrong side of the regular fabric. This is the wrong side of the lining. And I'm gonna lay the lining right on top of that. And I'm going to match it up. Now, these may have stretched a little bit, so you may need to manipulate them right on top of each other. And I'm going to baste these two together. I'm going to use clips. And I'm just going to clip around where I'm going to baste. And I like using, I've switched over to using these clips instead of pinning because I don't have to repin if I have. Um, if I pinned it, the pins upside down or backward um, with the clips, I don't have to. I don't have to rearrange them. So now I'm just going to uh, baste. Actually, I'm going to baste. I didn't need to grab more clips. I don't know why I did that. Um, actually, I'm going to baste most of this around. So I'm going to baste along the waist. And then I'm going to baste along the leg opening areas. And then I'm just going to baste um, here uh, in this dart area. We'll consider this uh, an invisible dart because this is where we're going to sew together first. So one thing that I'm going to do that um, you don't have to do, say you want this seam to be um, enclosed on the inside, you could do these separately. You're going to just sew this. Um, the lining together at the the dart here and then you would have uh... okay so I got ahead of myself there a little bit so there was another weird edit there so what I wanted to say about this dart is that I've, I've laid this lining um, on directly on top of this suit let me put a clip here um, and you don't have to do it this way you can do it separately and I'm gonna do it separately um, on the other two um, but I'm just going to do this um, here on the swim because I want to get going with this, but I want to give you a lot of information. So now you can do these separately. So let me just open uh, these up really quickly so you can see. So if I've got two here, I'm going to get to this in a second. Um, you can go ahead and sew your lining and your uh, self or outside fabric um, separately here on these seams like I'm going to do and then match those seams together and just base stitch them and that's what I'm going to do just kind of base stitch them tack them together so they don't move around I don't want to sew them on top of everything like I do with the other swimsuits or the other underwear all the way up because um, it will not come to a good point up here at the end of the dart so for the swim, to get going, to make this speedy, I'm just going to baste the lining to the self fabric and then also this seam um, to close up that seam. And it will, be, it will be okay, trust me, because the lining is so thin. So um, I know that was a lot of information, but I'm gonna get going here. So I'm gonna run over to the sewing machine and baste this all together. Okay, so I've got the lining basted to the front. Um, one thing, I don't know why I didn't do this, but I really should have started with the lining down by the feed dogs. That would have helped keep it from, it did stretch out a little. It would probably help it keep from stretching as it did here a little bit. I'm not really gonna worry about that. Um, it's not that bad. I think when it's worn, it won't be that big a deal, but this is just a sample. So um, if you put the lining on where the feed dogs, 
are, it will help it from um, stretching out. And I did that here. You saw me switch over to that. So now all we have to do is we have to sew this center dart and I'm going to be doing that on all of the fronts. So basically all you need to do is fold it back um, in half and just match everything up together and I'm going to clip these and I'm going to sew from the bottom up here up to here and when you get up to this point you're going to sew and you're going to gradually go off and then just sew right off and if you can manage to curve it slightly um, that will uh, help you to avoid uh, dimple right in the front but once it's worn and stretched out in this area um, you won't really see that dimple um, so we're going to sew it off and then we're going to reinforce it with a straight stitch machine and i'm not going to come back here and explain that you're just going to see me do that in the sewing machine so i'm going to do that with all of these and i've got for the underwear the the b and the c's i've got four of these so i'm what i'm going to do with these is i'm going to sew it just like i explained here for the the swim because it's all the same step so this will go uh, pretty quickly although I'm doing three of these I don't know why I unfolded these let's get these lined back up so all of these are going to be sewn and then I'm going to reinforce up here where I ended and then what I'm going to do with these ones is I'm going to stack them on each other and I'm going to actually just stitch where that seam allowance is in the seam allowance about up to just about an inch away from where I ended and that will keep um, these seams from moving around on you when you're wearing them so these I didn't unfold so now um, I did kind of explain before why you don't want to um, stack this on top of each other and stitch is because up here they're not going to be um, aligned up so you have a hard time of getting that off at the same point and there's a lot of thickness there so you don't want to increase your chances of getting that dimple so that's why I'm doing these separately and of course if you're not lining these you don't have to um, but understand it's just gonna be kind of a very thin uh, suit Okay, so I'm gonna get all of these sewn up. Okay, all of those darts uh, are sewn together. And before I move on um, with the swimsuit, I wanna actually put the buttonhole in now. So I know I have a buttonhole uh, picture on all the patterns, um, but I'm not gonna do that on this underwear, but I wanna put a drawstring into this. Now you can of course uh, do that with these if you want to, if you're making uh, this style these views in swimwear, you're gonna to need to fold these out like that. So everything is flat and I'm gonna do this in just a sec um, after I get the buttonhole done. You would need to find out here on the center here where you wanna put that buttonhole um, on these two. So I'm gonna do this here. So I just need to find the center and I fold this in half and I'm just going to go ahead and put a pin where that center would be. Open that up again. Now I am using one inch elastic and you can use the elastic if you would like and kind of put the elastic where um, it's going to go. Of course, the elastic is going to be on the inside, but I'm going to use erasable pen and put a mark there. You can barely see that, but I've marked it here. 
um, and that's the edge of elastic, uh, edge of the elastic, and that's where um, everything is going to be folded. Let me take this pin out there. Folded. So if I fold on that line, okay. That means that within this area right here, my pin is not working with me. Okay. So if I fold again on that line, huh, I have to put the buttonhole between the raw edge and my fold line. So I'm just gonna mark here about the center of that. And I'm just gonna go ahead and cross mark that where the center is or where it was. My markings are really dirty. Um, so I can just take a little bit of heat and these marks will come out. So that is about where my buttonhole is going to go, um, top and bottom. So I don't think, it, is it going to be that big? I don't know. We'll find out. Now before I take this over to the machine and put the buttonhole in, um, because these machines don't like to work with knits, um, I'm using some lightweight, medium weight rip away, and this is embroidery stabilizer. And you can, of course, always use just regular paper, but I can kind of see through this. So what I like to do is I'll put this underneath that area and then on top of that area. And what that does is it makes it act like woven fabric. And so the stitching um, will be much easier for the machine. So I'm going to go put uh, the buttonhole in and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got the buttonhole in. I need to trim this up. I didn't have this. Um, I didn't trim there because the camera cut out. So you missed half of the buttonhole if not most of the buttonhole, and I didn't realize until I got done. It said my uh, storage was full, and I failed to completely delete some of the previous videos. So anyway, I think you all know how to install a buttonhole. Now, when you do the buttonhole, when you have your rip away or your paper, you don't want to just rip it off. Um, rip into where that buttonhole is, and then very gently peel it away. That's what I'm doing here. And it came out pretty good. So now that that's all ready, we can start actually putting the body of the garment together. So I'm gonna wait on this side seam. So this is the swimsuit. Now, if you're just doing, whoops, if you're just doing this view, you can move on to uh, putting the back face sides together, sewing your side, oh, where am I in the camera? Sewing the side seams together and the crotch seam together. I'm gonna hold off on that. Right. Um, but I'm going to be working with the back on the C. So I'm going to be working with the mesh for right now. So I'm going to open up the back. Let me move these more out of the way so we can see this here. So this is the C and I want to finish the back because the rest of it is going to be the almost the same. Okay. So this is my mesh, and there's really not a right or wrong side to this. Um, I'm not gonna worry about it. If you look really close, there's a slightly smoother side on it, um, but uh, to the unknown eye, you can't really tell. So um, I cut these kind of carefully. I was looking for some pink and blue variations, so that's why I took a little bit more uh, care in placing where I wanted to place on the fabric. So now I've got these notches here and I'm just gonna match these. Um, make sure you're sewing it on the, the face side or the side that you want. Try not to stretch too much. And then we're gonna just clip these together. I'm gonna do one at a time instead of clipping everything together, but I'm just gonna show you one because it will take too much time. And I'm sure this video is already really long. Now, if you look here and you have these points that are extending up, don't worry about that. This, it's built that way. So your seam allowances really should be where uh, they're coming, but I think they have where they come together. Um, but I think I overcut on this. 
uh, just because I didn't want to lose any. So I'm going to sew from the bottom up to the waist um, with my serger right up. And then when I come back, I'll have both of them done. Okay, so I have the sides of the mesh on here. And again, this is for view C. Um, now, uh, I have decided to make this video longer and uh, because I want to do some top stitching. So, which means that the video is gonna be a little bit longer. Um, but if you don't wanna see me do the top stitching, you can just um, click forward um, to the next section. So I don't do this a lot in my videos because it takes more time. Um, but in these cases, I think that I'm gonna go ahead and do this at least on the underwear part. And I'm gonna use, be using my cover stitch machine. So I'm actually going to cover stitch right on top of here. Um, and it makes it uh, look a little bit more sporty. Now I'm gonna be folding the seam allowances under um, toward the back pieces. Um, and also, I just want to mention, I chose not to line the back, and that just means doing a double layer of this stuff. Um, this is jersey. Um, so I just chose not to. Um, you can, but again, it's just going to make it a little bit heavier in the rear, and I didn't want to do that. So I'm going to cover stitch these seams, um, and then we will actually bring the fronts in to both the B and the C, because they'll be the same. The same. So, um, oh, I forgot one thing. I'm glad that I had this here. I'm gonna be using my rip away again. I'm just gonna rip a little piece off of here. And you don't need much of this and you can use a piece of paper as well. So because I'm gonna either start here or here, um, depending on um, how close I wanna get, um, if I start right here at the edge, can you see that? Um, the machine may not like to go because of the feed dogs are, fed, are set kind of uh, wide apart. And sometimes you'll see me pulling the thread from the back. So what I can do is I can take a little piece of this and put it underneath so all the feed dogs can grab that and it will help me feed the beginning of that through the cover stitch. So that's what I'm going to do. So um, I have my needle gauge set about an, in, uh, an eighth of an inch apart. Um, that means that the two needles on the left are close together, and that's what I'm going to be using throughout uh, the top stitching. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. Join me over at the cover stitch. Okay, so I'm back and I've done that top stitching and it looks kind of, it looks nicer. I think it lays flatter. So it kind of dimpled a little bit over here on this side and that's because I wasn't as close to the seam. Um, and it just kind of, uh, it just kind of dimples from the different layers there. Um, but that can be actually pressed out. Um, now I'm gonna be very careful when I remove this um, rip away, just very carefully kind of pull it um, I keep my fingers next to the stitches while I'm pulling that out. Um, and then if this gets washed, it'll kind of pretty much uh, dissolve um, as well. So, do this other side. I could have done this off camera, but I wanted you to see how I'm ripping it. I'm just being very careful. So remember this uh, cover stitch on the underside is a chain. So if you grab the wrong thread, or you forgot to make sure it's um, tied off, then it's gonna unchain unch unch and rip out really easy. Okay, so now that is done. The back and the sides of C, um, the view C is done. 
So I'm going to bring in right quick because um, I'm going to work on these pieces now, the B and the C. As I mentioned before, we just need to fold our um, fronts out so we can hide this seam on the inside. Now you have the option of basting these together as well around the leg opening um, and the sides if you want, but they pretty much hold together. Um, some of these jersey knits tend to stick together, so I'm not going to worry about it. For right now, I'm just going to clip, clip everything. And uh, the view B actually has a full back, has the full side and the back. So this is the face side up. Do I get everything in here? Almost. Okay. And then all I have to do, and the, I have these um, pinned together so they don't fall apart. So I said I wanted the orange. I want the orange or the red. I think I said the orange before to carry over with the orange, but I see the red here. So I think I'm actually going to use the red as the face side. So I changed my mind. Okay, so face side, face side. And I'm gonna match the notches. And I could have basted this all together, the front, but I didn't. So match those notches. I'm gonna pin it. Let me move this a little closer. Now on this end, you're going to have the little point sticking out at the end. That's the way the pattern is built, so don't worry that it doesn't match. If you don't, let me show you this. If your point only goes to the edge, then it's actually not the right seam. So your point should actually be over the edge and where your fabric meets here, where they cross over, that's actually your seam allowance. That's your quarter inch. And remember along that one edge, you're gonna be, you're gonna have uh, elastic. And then I'm going, and the same thing, you're gonna have an overlapping, well that didn't, this fabric, again, probably not for beginners, even I'm having a trouble with it. And then, of course, I'm trying to clip everything together, and I've got clips everywhere. Um, once I get to the machine, I take the clips out, and it's a little bit easier to handle, but see how this one end kind of sticks out? That's supposed to be like that, okay? So don't worry about that. So now I'm going to fold this over to this other side, and because I'm going to do these at the same time. And clip this together. I just need to hold that. Matching those notches and then the other side. And I have to do this so I can see it. I keep trying to do things backwards so you can see it, but it's kind of messing me up. It's hard to do things upside down for the videos. So. This is how you will see that. Okay, so just to give you a visual, if it doesn't slip out of my hands, this fabric's also slippery. So here, as well as I didn't clip one at the notch here. Talk about overpinning. Okay. So this is really what it looks like. So your side seams here is where you're gonna be sewing. Um, and that's what I'm gonna do. Now I'm gonna clip here, this one too. I'm gonna clip this. I'm not gonna do it in the camera. I'm not gonna take the time to do that. So I'm doing exactly the same thing. So before I go over there, I'll just come back after I've got this one all clipped up um, and I'll show you what that looks like. And then we'll go over to the sewing machine, the serger. Okay, I'm back. I've got uh, my front sewn onto my body and I have the top stitching here. I can turn this 
um, one right side out too. I'm doing something I really shouldn't be doing with this one and that's handling it a lot because of the mesh. Um, but I just wanted you to see this. Okay, with the top stitching. Now, um, one thing that I did do that I didn't say I was going to do was that I basted um, here in the leg area on the front and that's just to keep everything um, together. Uh, what I was finding is that with these clips on there, it just made everything kind of heavy um, and I was having to remove clips so that uh, they wouldn't get caught in the machine. So that's what all I did. Um, you've seen me do that before. I did it on um, the swim before. So I'm going to set these two aside and I'm going to take care of the uh, view A now, the swim. And um, if I did had to do this again, just to reiterate, I think I said this before, is that I would do these separately and not do this seam together. So I would do them separately, similar to the way I did the underwear, and then just stick, stitch those seams together um, inside uh, so it's concealed. Um, but I've already done it, so we're gonna move forward. So now I've got my back. Okay, so I have the back here, and if you saw a little edit there, I just had a huge sneezing fit. So I'm back now, everything's okay. This is the face side of the back. I'm gonna match the face side of the front to that at here at the side seams. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna match here. And you see the back is slightly wider. Whoops, you can't see that. So the back is slightly wider than the front and that's the way that I made it. So just line these up here. I don't have notches on the side because I thought that these uh, side seams would be obvious. So I'm just going to put one clip because once I get in the machine, I have to remove that anyway because this is going to be a narrow side seam, a side area. So I'm going to clip that. And you know, while I'm here, instead of doing double duty, I may as well pin at the bottom here too because I'm going to be stitching these two and I don't really want to have to come back. I'm going to put two on this. I should probably cut that excess even though it's stretched, it, it'll be okay because this is super stretchy lining and it didn't actually get warped too bad. Um, but, and that's another reason for doing them separately. So I'm just gonna clip it. Of course, I'll have to rearrange everything once I get in the machine. And I'm gonna actually do the same thing on these two pair as well. So I'm going to clip one because I'm going to have to unclip these anyway. So I'm going to cut away here and I'll meet you at the sewing machine. Okay, so we have three suits here, three briefs, one made with swim fabric and two with a jersey knit and one with a mesh. So they all look the same now. And so the sewing for the rest of it is actually going to be the same because we're just gonna be applying the elastics. Um, so I'm actually just going to do it on one and that uh, process will be the same for all three of them. And which one do I choose? I'm probably gonna choose this one. It's gonna be easier for me to work with in the machine. I think, of course, now that I've said that, I'm probably gonna to have tons of problems. It's, you know, um, sewer's law. So um, anyway, um, I'm going to let you watch the elastic uh, preparation coming at you right now. Okay, so we are ready to prepare the elastic. Um, and for this, I'm using a one inch wide elastic and I've cut the length that I need, I've needed. So just make sure that you have your amounts here that you need to cut. So here are the size ranges and then the amount of elastic that you need to cut. Um, so I'm doing a medium, so I've cut 32 inches. Um, and so what I like to do is get the length of the elastic and on either ends, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark my stitch line and I've got a marking tool and a ruler and I'm just going to put the ruler at the half inch mark on either side 
and I'm actually marking on the same side of the elastic. So notice that these marks are on the same side of the elastic. You can see that. Where am I going with the... Okay, so they're on the same side. And so when I come around, I make a loop and I'm stacking them right on top of each other on top of that line. And you wanna make sure that you don't get any kind of twists in the elastic, otherwise you'll have to rip it out um, and do it over again. So just make a loop and overlap on top of those lines. And if you like, you can pin it either way before you get to the machine, you can pin it like that, or you can pin it like this, and that's fine. So now I'm gonna go over to the sewing machine and stitch right across this line to make it secure. Okay, so I've got the elastic band, elastic loop, all sewn together and it's um, nice and secure. Um, now I just double check again all the way around the loop that you don't have any twists in it. So what we need to do now is we need to divide this into four equal parts. So I like to fold on my stitch line like this and go all the way to the other side. And now you can pin this. I'll go ahead and do both ways. Um, I'm just gonna take my pin, pen. This is a erasable uh, marker. Um, and I mark the opposite side. And then I take that marking and I match it up to my stitch line. And I've got that matched. And then on either one of these, on both of these ends, actually, I'm going to mark here. I'm gonna put this up like this and then just mark both sides. Of course, it would help if I had, you know, a, large, a larger marker, but I just like to do this because then I don't have to deal with so many pins. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that for you anyway. So I've got this all divided into fourths and I'm just gonna go ahead and put a pin in here and we can actually use these same pins to pin it to the garment as well. And just so you can see that I will have four equal parts. Got that one pinned. Okay. So now I have my stitch end. So this is one, two, three, four equal parts. And now um, I'll grab the garment and we can match this up to the garment. Okay, so I've cut the elastic, the two elastics for my leg opening, the length that I need. And so what I'm gonna do on, uh, on each of the ends, there are two here, so I'm gonna mark off a half inch. You can do more um, if you want, but I think um, a half inch is fine. So uh, you can use, I have a couple different colors of um, erasable markers, so let's see if the red one is gonna work. Sometimes these dry out. So I'm just gonna mark a half inch here, there we go, there's one, a half inch, and then make sure your markings are on the same side of the, of the elastic. And this is basically the same for, as what we did with the uh, waistband. Okay, so I've got those marked. Now you wanna make sure that you don't get any twists in these. So I'm gonna bring these around. I'm gonna lay those marks right on top of each other. Okay, and uh, I don't have a clip. Let me grab one of those really quick. But you can just pin it or clip it together just to hold it there. We're gonna go over to the machine and stitch right across that line. I'm gonna do the same thing with this. There are actually two ways you could stitch this and I'll show you um, on each of them um, sometimes a zigzag uh, kind of pulls out. What I'm talking about is there's one way where you can just stitch straight across here um, using a straight stitch, or you can zigzag across the entire section of the overlap part. Okay, so I'll do one, one zigzag and one straight stitch. Okay, so we have the uh, leg opening elastic sewn together in 
circles. You know, it's just a loop. Um, and just make sure, again, that you don't have any twisties. Um, so I showed you two ways. You could sew straight across the elastic, or you could zigzag the length of the um, overlap. So you decide which is going to be best for you. It doesn't really matter because these are going to be covered with um, overlocking and then it's going to be turned to the inside anyway. So now to prepare the rest of the elastic. So um, if you've done it, uh, if you stitch it like, like this, you're just going to fold on that seam to fold everything in half. Now you can either mark it with the pen like this or you can use a pin. So usually when I'm making these, I just, uh, when I'm making any kind of underwear or swimwear, I just mark it with the pen. So then I'm going to take that marking and I'm going to match it back up to my original mark. And then I'm going to fold it in half. I'm going to mark uh, both ends of these with either the pen or the pin. So um, I'm going to go ahead and use pins. I'm going to do both for you so um, there's no confusion about what you need to do. And you're gonna do this for both of the loops. So that makes it easy, I see that mark, and then I can just put a pin like this on both sides. And what we're doing is dividing it into fourths. And then we will repeat this step once we get to um, the garment. So there's the one, and then we're gonna do the other one. So if you've done it with the zigzag, this may have to seem a little bit thick right here. So just find your marking fold it on that marking line just like we did before and mark the opposite side with a pen or a pin. Your clips won't really work for this um, because you're going to, once you get this onto the garment, you're going to actually be stretching it. So again, you're going to take this mark and mark and match it up to that original fold mark there. And then again, you have these two sides that you're going to mark and pin. Mark on both sides. And I'll put pins so that when we get to the garment, you'll be able to see very clearly where you need to match. Okay, and put the pin in this one. Okay, so there we have both our leg openings mark. We don't really need one here because we can see exactly where that uh, mark is, okay? So that's it to the elastic preparation. Let's get to um, back to the garment. So now that the elastic is uh, divided into equal fourths, we need to do the same thing to the brief. So um, I've already done it on this side. So I'm going to do the leg openings first. It's better if you do one at a time. That way you don't have so many pins and everything pinned at the same time. So even though I've pinned this, I just did that so you can see that I've done it, so you can see what it should look like. And I'm gonna actually do it now with you. So now where I like to put this, the seam of the elastic is not in the front and not on the seam um, here because it creates more bulk. So I like to start it, you know, about two inches away from where the actual side is on the rear. That way it's not as noticeable that there's some bulk there, but also it's not going to really um, um, affect you. It's not gonna itch or anything like that. So um, the way to do this is I find the spot where I want and I put a pin there Okay, that's good. And then I'm going to very carefully, as we know, knit stretch. So I'm going to fold on that pin and I'm going to find my edges of the fabric very carefully and I'm going to walk the fabric along. Now there are curves to be considered. If you just fold it in, in half without considering the curves, you may not be getting the equal half. So I'm very gently walking until I get to the other side of that fold. Um, and so I put a pin there. So let me, where am I? Okay, lay that out again. Okay, so I've got a pin here and a pin here. And now I'm going to match those pins up together. And I'm gonna do the same thing for each of the sides on either side of those pins. 
matching walking along the edge to find the opposite side here and I'll put a pin here and then walking the other side now this is the side you've got a lot of curve in so I want to be careful and make sure that I'm getting those edges pretty well matched up and I'll put a pin here Okay, so now I've got my four equal parts. I've got four pins. Now I can actually uh, start to match the elastic, the leg elastic to those pins. Now I'm only going to show you one leg because uh, you can go back and rewatch the video if you need to see the other leg. It's exactly the same way. So now I'm going to make sure now this is the inside. This is the actual face side where you're looking at the face side. But when we're looking at the front, this is the inside of the garment. So I'm going to flip this over. I'll kind of have it on this side. This is the side I want to work on. So now this is the inside of the garment. Let me lay this flat, flatter. Okay. So if I just kind of pull the back down, you can see the top stitching. So the inside now is actually the face side. So where I like to put that seam, I just mentioned it, the seam on the elastic is going to go right here on that mark where I like to start uh, my sewing. Okay, so I'm going to pin that here. And instead of, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and pin like this because I'm gonna to have to remove those pins as I sew. But I'm just remembering that I like to put the elastic on the bottom. It gives me a little bit more control of what happens with the fabric on the top. So I'm gonna repin this and I'm gonna pin it kind of going diagonal a little bit. That way I'll be able to pull that out easier. And then I'm just gonna gently walk around and match up my pins. And I'm gonna take one of the pins out and I'm just going to pin it kind of going diagonal. And that's so I get the most of the elastic. Even though this is gonna be on the bottom, I'll be able to pull those pins out as I go. And then carefully, you don't need to stretch the elastic right now, you're just matching the pins up. Pin it again. And then we'll take these other pins out in a minute. And last one. Now you do have curve, a curve in the back, and you're gonna to have to make sure that you match up that edge of the fabric with the edge of the elastic. All right, so let's lay this out so we can see what we've got. All right, so I'm gonna take these other pins out where I had divided the garment, the brief fabric, and that's it. So now where am I starting? I've got my, um, my seam here, so that's where I'm going to start. So I'll probably start a little bit before it. And as I sew, I will be stretching the elastic to match the uh, shape of the fabric. I'm trying really not to stretch too much of the fabric out, all right? So let's see how that goes. Now, if you want to, you can change out these pins. I might do that just so you can see me do it. Again, do this one leg opening at a time. Um, it will help your frustration level not be so high. Okay. One more pin there. Okay. So again, where is that? Okay, so I'm gonna start right here and let's go over to the serger. Okay, so we have the elastic on the leg openings attached. So now we got to put the uh, waistband elastic on. And I'm gonna start on the back, but I need to find the center back and I didn't put a notch there. So what I'm doing is I'm folding and I'm lining these seams up very carefully. And I'm just carefully matching the edges of the fabric all the way up to the back center back put a pin there 
And then I'm actually going to put a pin here. I should have started with a pin there, but I forgot that I don't have a seam there. So this is my center front. And then I'm gonna match those two seams together and put a pin on either side. Now, for the swim pattern, the view A, your side seams are not your, uh, your fourth. So you're going to be uh, needing to do this with that waistband as well. So for view C, you're going to do it just like I've done it here. Let me grab the swim. See, I haven't put the elastic on here yet, but see it folds over a little bit. So you want to be careful with that. So you'll have to fold this, match up your seams there, and then your center front. I did a pretty good job finding the center front on the uh, for the buttonhole, and we probably could have pin pin there after it. And then you're gonna put the pin here for the center back. And then match those two pins up. Whoops, that pin came out. Match the two pins up, and you see it comes over just a little bit. I know it seems like not just a little bit, a uh, little bit extra, uh, but you will have to, if you don't, if you use the seam here on the view A as one of your fourths, then you're gonna be stretching the elastic in the back um, much further than um, in the front, okay? So now, if I get this pinned correctly again, um, so now that is four equal parts. So that's what you need to do for the view A. Okay, so now uh, for the attaching this, I'm gonna flip this over to the back. I like to put the seam of the elastic in the back. And let's see, I like to put the elastic on the back so the pins need to go that way. Do they? No, I'm looking at this backward. They need to go the other way. I lo I'm looking at it like the way you're looking at it. Okay, so just kind of continue matching your pins up all the way around. Here's the one for the center front. And I'll take these extra pins out in just a minute because we're really almost done with this thing. Okay, that's all pinned up around with the exception that I have something crazy going on. And if you look here, I have a twist. So I need to unpin this one and twist that. I have actually sewn something like that before. So you just want to double check that your uh, elastic is not twisted um, going around the circle. Okay, so let's go over to the serger and get this attached. Okay, so the elastics are all applied. Now all we need to do is turn them to the inside. So for the waist, when you're turning this, um, you wanna make sure that you're turning it straight down, and then you wanna make sure that you get a nice flush edge here on the top. Don't, uh, try not to have any extra fabric, because as you're sewing, it will stretch and it may uh, rope. Um, that's the squiggly lines on the top. So I'm gonna carefully fold this over and I'm gonna be using the cover stitch. So I'm gonna be stitching on top of the fabric. That's the outside of the garment. And I'm just gonna go kind of fourth ways around to find where my approximate side seam might be. This might not be it, but. And you can stretch it a little bit to find that roll. Here in the front is gonna be a little bit difficult because I don't know where the exact center is, but I can eye it. And you can put as many pins as you want. Um, the clips won't really work for this because they won't hold um, tight enough. 
and then as you go around your sewing you'll have to just re keep readjusting it so I'm gonna stretch this kind of pull that down a little bit and just kind of smooth it across that now for the leg opening elastic do this one a little bit better for the leg opening elastic I don't usually pin it I usually just um, start uh, here start a little bit before this is where the seam of the elastic is just kind of stretch that and turn it down of course it's going to be on this side and that's about usually where I start I can put a pin in it right there but then um, as I go around what I do is I stretch it and then with my fingers you'll see me use my hands and my fingers a lot I'm smoothing it away from that edge of the elastic to stitch to uh, uh, sew it because it's such a narrow piece so I'll do that uh, for right now now before I go over there um, I'm going to remove the basting stitching because if I need to stretch this more that basting stitching is going to get in the way so I'm going to remove the stitching um, and then I'm going to go over to the cover stitch machine and start uh, sewing this elastic so I'm going to start with the uh, waist elastic and instead of starting right at the center I'm going to start over here a little bit where it won't be as noticeable if I don't um, end right exactly on top of that stitching but I'll try to do that okay so uh, let's go Okay, so uh, we've got all the elastics turned. Let me uh, just turn this face side out. Okay, so if you are doing view B or C, um, you're done. Um, just make sure everything is clipped. Um, there's one more step for the view A, which is coming up. Um, so there was a couple of glitches here. This was a super stretchy fabric and I of course got some puckers here in the front I didn't stretch enough I'm, this is also slippery and my hands are slippery I should have put some lotion on for a grip but if you get puckers like this sometimes you can stretch it a little bit and just kind of pick at it to get that fabric to smooth down but once it's worn you really won't see those so all in all it's really not a uh, bad uh, it's not that difficult to put this together it's just the fabric choices that I made so as I mentioned um, if you have done the B and the C views you're done um, I will bring all of the um, finished product that I did um, in this tutorial out in just a minute but I want to get to that last step for the view a coming up right now all right so um, the last thing we need to do is to install the drawstring uh, in view A. So I'm going to turn this brief suit inside out and um, today I'm using this uh, pre-made drawstring. I got this um, on Amazon. I bought a package of them and it they come like this and I had a um, another part of it which I got in the package and I, I honestly can't remember uh, what it was that I um, the exact uh, name of the the listing but it's just a uh, drawstring and I think I looked for uh, a drawstring for sweatpants and it comes heat like this and you get several in there um, five black and five white and then it comes with this threader um, I don't really like the threader the ends of these have metal end caps on them and it's hard to thread the uh, metal end cap into the threader so I just I don't use this um, so uh, what you have to do is you have to actually insert this into the waistband first and then thread the drawstring through 
the holes here and then you pull it through the waistband. But I just prefer my safety pin method. So um, what we first need to do before we do this is open up the buttonhole. So what I like to do, so I don't cut all the way through, is here on one end of the buttonhole is to put a pin across just in front of that bar tack there. And then I will spear into that buttonhole, trying to miss the stitching, just getting the fabric. And then you need to make sure that you also get your lining. So as long as you can open up and see the elastic, you don't want to get the elastic. So you can kind of see the elastic through there. That's not the lining, that's the elastic. That's what we want. And we just need uh, a hole big enough. Sometimes you can clip a little bit more. Okay, we just need a hole big enough to be able to insert the drawstring. So on this, because it has the end cap, um, that's not going to be enough for feeding it through. So I just like to tie uh, a loose knot like that. And then I take the safety pin and I pierce through that knot just so it is held on there. It's a little bit bulkier than the other drawstrings that um, I had. I have um, very little polyester drawstring that I bought in bulk and it's hard to find. It's also kind of expensive. So um, that's why I switched over to these and they were already pre-cut. Now, um, just a disclaimer, or not really a disclaimer, just an advice. These are about 50 inches long, but I usually um, say on the pattern to cut 10 to 12 inches longer than your waist, and that's usually enough. You'll see once I get this through that the uh, excess is really long. So um, you could also cut these off, but you won't be able to use a lighter to um, kind of cauterize the ends or melt the ends because it's not polyester. This is cotton. Um, I don't really think you have to worry about it shrinking um, in the water or um, in the wash. You should be washing your swimsuits in cold water anyway, um, so, and not throwing them in the dryer. So if you're really worried about it, I would soak the cotton um, drawstring in some warm water probably for about 20 or 30 minutes and then wring it out and then you could throw it in a lingerie bag and throw it in the dryer to shrink it more and that would probably um, be fine. So we're almost all the way through. My lesson about the drawstrings wasn't quite long enough. We'll get all three of these done. I have the other two ready already done. They didn't need a drawstring. Uh, this is just for the swimsuit. You know, the reason you want a drawstring is because you're in, if you're swimming and you're going along and you come out of the water, you're swimming really hard, you don't want the suit to uh, fall off your body, slide off your body. That's what the drawstring is for. I'm having trouble getting the rest of this out. Okay, let's see how much more, how long that is. Let me pull out some more. Hold on to the end while you scrunch the rest through. Kind of just work it. Let's see what we've got here. Keep checking it. That's actually probably pretty long right here. You could probably cut these off and retie them. But if you don't want to do that, I'm going to have to do this. I've been doing it upside down so you can see me do it. but. I don't think you really need, I think you probably get the gist of it. Oh, I went too long. All right, that's enough. You get the idea. Okay, so I'm going to take the safety pin out. Undo this knot. You don't have to undo the knot. And I'm just going to tie these together really quickly. And there's the drawstring. And now I'll bring the other two in so we can have a last look. Okay, here we are, all three of the finished product. Again, this is um, pattern 54, the slim brief with three views. We have view A, which is uh, your basic brief style with uh, side seams here. 
Let me see if I can get that back into the frame there. And then this is view B, which is really the same cut, except the, the front has these seams here and the back wraps around the front, so there's no actual side seam. And view C is actually the same as this in the front, um, except I have a back slash seam at the back, which makes kind of for some fun styles if you're using this mesh. Now, this mesh is a definitely a more of an advanced user fabric, so uh, just be aware of that. I would test everything out before the sewing of it, the top stitching and the cover stitching. Make sure that it uh, works out for you. So there are the three views. Um, thank you for sticking with me all the way through this tutorial. My closing remarks are coming up. Wow, that was uh, something else, right? If you stuck with me through the entire video, I applaud you. I had to take several uh, breaks throughout the filming. Uh, some things didn't go right for me. I did break a needle and um, I didn't put that in there, uh, but I do occasionally break needles on my machines. I'm not sure what happened, but that it happens to me too. So um, my closing remarks, actually, I kind of mentioned a lot of things during the video. Um, understand that the mesh that I used is really kind of for more advanced users. Um, once you get to know different types of fabrics, um, you know, the lighter weight ones, the slipperier ones, if you're a beginner, aren't the best fabrics um, to be using. But if you do choose to try some of those fabrics, just know that your frustration level may go a little bit higher. But just take little breaks, just stop, uh, walk away from the sewing machine for a few minutes, get your thoughts together, and then come back. Um, so, and that's even with a, an advanced sewer like me, I have to do that a couple of times too so um, just again I think this is a really fun pattern you have three different views in one pattern um, also you get the sewing instructions if you uh, don't want to watch the video or you need just something um, to remind you how to do a procedure you can get this pattern on my website so like a man.com the direct link is down in the description again thank you for watching and as always be well